This is the Apple Watch Series 10, and using it for the last month has been a combination of ups and downs. I bought the Series 10 as soon as it was announced, and after using the Series 9 over the last year and trying out some other alternatives, that's given me a pretty solid baseline for what to expect from a smartwatch, and with the Series 10, things started off pretty rocky. There were some bugs and software issues that over time have mostly been ironed out, and with things in a better spot now than they were a couple of weeks ago, I can finally appreciate a lot more about this watch, but there are still a couple things that I think could be improved. Today I'm getting into all of that, what's new with the Series 10 this year, and everything good and bad that I've experienced up to this point. So if you're thinking about upgrading or buying an Apple Watch yourself, or you're just curious to know how things have gone for me, Stick around, and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I've been using the Apple Watch daily since the Series 6, and each year seems to have incremental improvements. There's always a couple of spec bumps, but often there's one or two things that really do stick out. Last year with the Series 9, I'd say that would have been things like the double tap functionality and the display doubling in brightness, and this year, the biggest upgrades seem to be more visual than anything. When Apple announced the Series 10, they introduced it as having an all new design, and while I don't really think the design itself has actually changed much, there are some notable differences. The Series 10 is slightly bigger in surface area in both models, now offering a 42 and a 46 millimeter option versus 41 and 45 last year, but they are slightly thinner going from 10.7 millimeters to 9.7 in the Series 10. In my opinion, that does make the Series 10 look a little bit bigger on your wrist, but feel slightly less bulky because of the reduced thickness, although for the most part, it feels largely the same on my wrist. The Series 10 is 2.3 grams lighter in the 46mm aluminum version over the Series 9, and 1.9 on the smaller 42, so it is marginally lighter, but you will likely notice a much bigger difference if you're switching from a stainless steel model to the new titanium series 10, which is about 8 to 9 grams lighter than the old stainless steel models. Titanium does replace stainless steel this year, and I was really interested in it, but it comes with a pretty hefty price tag starting at $699 USD, where the base aluminum version is $300 less than that, which I just can't justify and is why I stuck with aluminum. The model that I have here is the new glossy jet black color, and Apple really limited the color options this year to this, silver, and rose gold, but I do really like the finish on the black, and it does match my black iPhone 16 Pro quite well. I think the glossy black just makes everything look a little more cohesive in terms of how it blends in with the screen, and the screen itself takes up much more surface area with smaller rounded bezels as well. It's also the largest screen ever put into an Apple Watch, with it being 3% bigger than the Apple Watch Ultra, and I do really appreciate the larger screen size. It's just nicer to have more space, both for viewing things and using the keyboard, and the screen itself is a little nicer this year with the all-new LTPO3 wide-angle OLED display. That doesn't look any different when you're directly looking at the watch, but at an angle it is much brighter than the Series 9. That panel is also supposed to be more power efficient and enable the always on display to update once every second versus once every minute on previous models. So you can see things like the second hand tick or scrolling titles on Spotify, which is a nice touch, but let's just come back to the power efficiency. Better power efficiency or better battery life was one of the things that I was hoping for the most with this watch. And if I would have made this review a week or two after I'd got the Series 10, I wouldn't have very good things to say about it. For the first couple of weeks, I was getting between 4 and 8 hours of battery life sometimes, regardless if I restarted the watch and closed all the apps I wasn't using, which obviously isn't acceptable and somewhat unusable, but an update to watchOS 11 did come through that seems to have solved that, where I now get between 32 and 36 hours, just like the Series 9. It would definitely be nice if that number increased at some point, and I get that making the watch thinner does kind of restrict you in that regard in terms of the battery size, but one saving grace is that the watch does charge much faster this year, going from 0 to 80% charge in 30 minutes, 
as opposed to 45 on the Series 9. That makes this super easy to charge. Say if you pop it on the charger and hop in the shower, you'll have enough charge when you're done to last you well into the next day, no problem. My daily use usually consists of things like checking notifications and responding to messages, along with tracking a daily walk and a workout, and just your average use where on rare occasions, I'll take a call if my phone isn't nearby, or sometimes I'll use the media playback feature, which is new this year as well. For the first time, you can actually play music or podcasts through the Apple Watch speaker with apps like Apple Music or Spotify, and while it doesn't sound amazing by any means, I have found it to come in quite handy at times. For me, that's mostly if I'm out on a walk or doing something in the kitchen and I forget my AirPods or phone somewhere. With my watch on, I can just play a podcast through Spotify and everything comes through clear and reasonably loud on the Series 10. I would say that if you're expecting to hear it in a noisy or super busy area, you may have some trouble there, but just in a small or a quiet space, it's more than good enough. And as always, it works good for calls as well, where you do have another great addition. The other side of your conversations should now sound better as the Series 10 has a new voice isolation feature on the mic, which supposedly uses the same technology that's in the AirPods Pro 2s. That is enabled through the Neural Engine in the new S10 SIP, which to my knowledge is roughly the same as the S9 in terms of performance. But just to give you an idea of the difference in mic quality between the Series 9 and 10, here's a sample of each. This is what things sound like on the Series 9. Right now I'm just talking directly into the microphone and I've got some ambient restaurant background noise playing cranked on my MacBook Air. Right now I'm talking into the Series 10 microphone and in the background I've got some ambient noise playing on my MacBook Air that's cranked up pretty loud. So this should give you a pretty good idea of what it would sound like on the other end of a call in a really busy or noisy environment. As you can see, the Series 10 does sound a bit better and is a little clearer with background noise. And outside of that and the other things that I've mentioned, there's really only a couple of features left that are exclusive to the Series 10. There's now a depth gauge and a water temperature sensor that works similar to the Ultra, where it'll tell you your depth up to 6 meters and what the temperature of the water is. That's likely only going to be useful for a small group of people, and there's also a new Tides app to go along with that, which I believe is available on older models as well. Beyond that, we start getting into features that are available across multiple watch versions with watchOS 11, like the new sleep apnea detection feature where the watch uses the accelerometer to monitor how you're moving at night and can notify you if it suspects you may have sleep apnea. I personally can't use that yet here in Canada as that feature is still waiting to be approved here and I've honestly been using my watch less and less for tracking sleep. I've been doing it a bit more just for testing purposes for this review, but for me, I sometimes feel like I don't want to track everything that's going on in my life. With sleep specifically, last year I got into this really weird headspace where I wasn't sleeping well, and having that show up in an app just exacerbated my anxiety, and I do think that sometimes gamifying everything isn't always great for mental health. And I know that everyone is different, and this may not bother you at all, but I did just want to highlight that. Now, I have had some other issues with watchOS 11 here and there, one of which I believe was actually a problem with iOS 18, where if I changed or turned off a focus mode on the Series 10, it would work intermittently on my other devices, so I'd stay in do not disturb mode or in the fitness mode after I turned them off. And because I have my home screen layout customized on my phone for each focus mode, that got old really fast. Again, that seems to have been fixed with a software update, but a couple other minor problems that I've been having that haven't been resolved are display related, where the battery graph no longer works in the watch settings and in the camera app, it often won't show anything on the watch face where it should be showing the viewport of the camera. That is sometimes resolved by restarting both devices but is still a black screen more times than not and honestly I probably wouldn't have even noticed this if it wasn't for all the testing that I've been doing with the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro but I will say the bugs and the issues that I have come across with the Series 10, regardless if they've been fixed or not, do seem to be a lot more significant than in previous years. 
For the first two weeks, I did really struggle with this device between the focus mode and battery drain bugs, but things are much better now, and overall, I've really liked the slight bump in screen size, the jet black look, and all the other added features like the wide angle display and media playback. The Series 10 does just about everything else as you'd expect, from tracking sleep, workouts, and prompting you to start a workout if you're on a long walk or a run and most of the time it's a solid companion device. That being said, if I didn't review tech for a living, I would probably just stick with the Series 9, because really, with day-to-day -day use, it's an iterative upgrade at best, and I think for you to really feel the difference, upgrading from the Series 6 or so is probably where you'll notice the jump, where anything after that, unless you're looking for a specific feature, is gonna be quite similar. For me, the only feature that I've been using more that isn't on the older models is the media playback through the speaker, but I would love to know, is there anything about this year's Apple Watch that you think that you would use more or notice more than previous years? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video useful or enjoyable. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me design a smartwatch that buzzes to remind you to take dramatic pauses in conversations, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.